Welcome to Chapter 10 of our course, MEC 260 on Engineering Statics. I'm Jay Mendelson, a lecturer in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. This week, you'll read Chapter 10 in our book, Vector Mechanics for Engineers, 12th edition, and we have homework 13 for you on the Connect website. In prior chapters, we solved problems for 2D equilibrium of rigid bodies by writing summation f sub x equals zero, summation f sub y equals zero, and summation of m around point A is zero, where point A was a central location of the rigid body for which we were trying to find reactions. The principle of virtual work also involves a system of rigid bodies in equilibrium but with a different set of equations. With this principle, if a body is displaced from equilibrium, the total work done by the external forces during the displacement is zero. The principle of virtual work is effective for finding forces in machines such as the scissor lift that is shown here. And usually it's for machines with repetitive members where trying to go through the equilibrium equations at all these different links would give you way too many equations and way too many unknowns to solve easily. But with our method of virtual work, we usually are just focused on one or two vertices at a time. And then through symmetry, we can derive equations to calculate the forces at the other links. Figure 10.1 on the right shows a particle that moves from point A to neighboring point A prime. Position vector R corresponds to the line OA, where A is the origin. Differential vector DR denotes this small vector joining A and A prime. We call this vector the displacement of the particle, where force F acts on the particle. The work du of force F corresponding to this displacement dr is defined as the quantity du is the scalar product of F and dr, which we verbalize as F dot dr. The work du equals F ds cosine alpha for displacement dr. That's in figure 10.2a on the bottom. So here is force F, which is acting in a known direction. Alpha is the angle between F and the vector dr connecting A and A prime. And the small vector ds times cosine alpha is the displacement of dr that's in the direction of F. For gravity, we use figure 2.10b, where work du is equal to w times dy, where y is the vertical direction. And du is positive if dy is going down. And du is a negative number if a dy is going up. And dy, it's a small little blue vector here, is equal to alpha dr. So that dy is only in the vertical downward direction. Some forces do no work, such as forces applied to fixed points where ds is zero, or they act perpendicular to the actual displacement of the particle, in which case cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. And examples of forces that do not do work include the reaction at a frictionless pin, when the body supported rotates about the pin, the reaction at a frictionless surface, when the body in contact moves along that surface, the reaction at a roller moving along its track, the weight of a body when its center of gravity moves horizontally so that there's no change in the height, no change in the potential energy of that body, and thus no work is done and the friction force acting on a wheel rolling without slipping. And that's because at any instant, the point of contact does not move on the wheel so that ds is equal to zero. Here's some forces that do work. 
the weight of a body when it moves partially vertically. So if this crane picks off the boxcar off the ground and starts moving it partially vertically, partially horizontally, the component that moves vertically is an example of work being done. And the friction force acting on a body sliding on a rough surface does work because it has to overcome the friction. And most forces applied on a moving body are going to do work because they're going to change the altitude of the body relative to the ground. The network of a system may be zero. Figure 10.3a shows links AC, there's AC and BC, which are connected at point C by this frictionless pin. And link BC exerts force F on AC. And due to equilibrium, link AC exerts force minus F on link BC. The work of the two forces cancels out. Figure 10.3b shows two blocks connected by cable AB. The work of the two internal cable forces, T, also cancels out because T prime is the negative of T in this cable. Now that doesn't mean that the work of the actual block itself cancels out because block B is going to change its height. We're just talking about the internal forces in the cable, T and T prime. The network of internal forces in a rigid body is zero, or else the body is not going to be rigid. Figure 10.4 shows particles A and B plus the forces F and minus F that they exert on each other. Displacements dr and dr prime are different. They are roughly going the same direction, but they have different magnitudes and slightly different angles. But for equilibrium, the components of dr and dr prime that are along line AB must be equal. And therefore, F times this component minus F times the same component will sum to zero. You determine the work of a couple as follows. Figure 10.5 below shows forces F and minus F forming couple M. Any small displacement is divided into two parts. Points A and B both undergo equal displacements dr1, so point A moves to A prime, B moves by the same length and angle to BB prime. But as far as rotation goes, point A prime remains fixed while B prime rotates into B double prime through a displacement dr2. And that has a magnitude ds2 is equal to r times d theta. In part one, the work of f and minus f cancels out. But in part two, only F does work of an amount du, which equals to F ds2, which is equal to F times r d theta. But recall the moment of a couple is equal to F times r. So the work of a couple m is du equals m d theta, where d theta is the small angle in radians through which the body rotates. Figure 10.6 shows a particle acted on by several forces. The particle may move from A to A prime if these forces shown are not balanced. So we don't know if displacement will occur, and therefore we call it a virtual displacement noted by del R. Del R represents a first order differential as opposed to dr, which represents an actual motion. The forces create virtual work, del U. If a particle is in equilibrium, the total virtual work of the internal forces is zero for a virtual displacement. And if a rigid body is in equilibrium, the total virtual work of all external forces is zero for a virtual displacement. If connected rigid bodies remain connected during a virtual displacement, 
only the work of the external forces to the system matters. So del u is f1 dot del r plus f2 dot del r plus f3 dot del r. So all the forces in this system take a dot product with del r. And that can be easily calculated in vector format del u as you use your vector addition to calculate all the forces f1 through fn get a new vector and take the dot product of that new vector with del r. Figure 10.7a shows a toggle vise ACB compressing a wooden block. We want to calculate force Q exerted by the vise on the block when force P is applied at C. That's assuming no friction. Force Q is shown here as the horizontal reaction of the block on the vise. And the same direction of Q is shown here in figure 10.7b, which shows the free body diagram. We have a normal force up of the block acting from the horizontal, and we have P acting down, and we have AY acting up and AX acting across, we obtain a virtual displacement by giving positive angle del theta, there's del theta, to angle theta, where theta is the angle between the link AC and the vertical axis. And with the origin at point A, X sub B increases as Y sub C decreases, meaning this link is going to flatten out angle theta will get larger as we push down on the vise with force P. Reactions AX, AY, and N do no virtual work. AX and AY are acting at point A, which is fixed in this free body diagram. Point B can move, but the normal force N is acting perpendicular to virtual displacement x sub b. So there's no work there. Which means we need compute only the virtual work of forces p and q, and then we set that sum to zero, and we can solve for q as a function of p. q and del x b have opposite directions in the free body diagram on the lower right, and therefore the virtual work of q is del u sub q is minus q times del x sub b. p and minus del y sub c have the same direction. So p goes down, minus del y sub c goes down, and the virtual work of p, which is del u sub p, is equal to plus p times a negative del y sub c, and that equals minus p del y sub c. And here's where we use the geometry of our free body diagram to back out an equation for q as a function of p. The sine of theta is just xb over 2 divided by l, where xb over 2 is half the distance xb between point a and point b. Cosine of this angle theta is y sub c divided by L. And rearranging terms, we get X sub B equals 2L sine theta and Y sub C equals L cosine theta. Now we take the differential of both these equations to get our virtual displacements. So del X sub B is equal to 2L, a constant, times cosine theta d theta, which is a derivative of sine theta, and del y sub c is equal to negative l sine theta times d theta, which is the derivative of cosine theta times l. Then del u is equal to del u sub q plus del u sub p, and that's equal to minus q times del x sub b minus p times del y sub c, and we calculated this equation on the prior slide. We multiply it out and we see that that is equal to 
minus 2q cosine theta plus p sine theta divided by l d theta. And now we set del u to 0. And so this more complicated term for del u simplifies because l d theta gets taken out by the fact that we set both sides to 0. And we just have to solve the equation 0 equals minus 2q cosine theta plus p sine theta. And that comes out to q is equal to p over 2 times the tangent of theta. So what you see is that q changes in value as a function of this angle. It's not a fixed force. p is a fixed force, but q is not a fixed force. We can also use the method of virtual work to solve reactions in over-constrained structures, like the one in figure 10.8a. Using our equilibrium equations, we would not have been able to calculate these reactions. But now we can get a solution for one of the x reactions, and then we can find out the other one. And then we can solve for the y reactions, a, y, and b, y is a function of p. So in frame a, c, b, point a is kept fixed in our virtual work analysis while point B is given a horizontal virtual displacement del x sub B. And we'll evaluate only the work of P and Bx. And we can do that because Ax and Ay don't have any displacement because we said that A is not moving. And B sub Y is perpendicular to virtual displacement del x sub B, so it has no virtual work. We can find Bx in the same way and with the same equation as the force Q of the previous example of figure 10.7b, which is shown here on the left. And we can do that because essentially the problem has the same geometry. Before we had force Q, and of course it's equal and opposite force minus Q. And in this problem, force Q going from point B reacting against Q going the other way is equivalent to force Bx. Before we had Q equals P over 2 tangent theta, and now we can say Bx is P over 2 times tangent theta. Let's try a sample problem 10.1, which is to find a reaction using the method of virtual work, and this time we're using a scissor jack going horizontally. Not as many links as the photo we had before, but it's illustrative. In this problem, we're going to determine the magnitude of the couple M required to maintain equilibrium of the scissor jack, where we see that the distance from link E to C is L, from C to B it's L, and from F to D it's L. And recall that for a virtual displacement consistent with the constraints, the reactions do no work. So we can focus solely on the force P and the moment M. And we'll solve for M in terms of P and the geometric parameter. Step one is to draw the free body diagram, which we show in figure one. And we choose a coordinate system with origin at E. We have reactions EX and EY and they're not going to do any virtual work because point E isn't moving. Force A won't be doing any virtual work because the assumption is that the scissor jack is in equilibrium, and if it's equilibrium, point A is not moving up and it's not moving down. Theta is the angle between link EC, B, and the horizontal. Del theta is the virtual movement of that angle. And we will solve for x sub d. x sub d is equal to 3L times cosine theta. So x sub d is the distance from E to directly under point D. The distance from E to C is L. From C to B is L. And then from B, continuing along till it gets to this vertical line, that distance is also L because FD is L, and if we just 
take the distance FD and move it up, you'll find that B to this vertical line is going to be the same distance as F to D, similar triangles. So now we know that del X sub D is the differential of this 3L cosine theta, and that's minus 3L sine theta del theta. Now we apply the principle of virtual work. Reactions A, E sub X, and E sub Y do no work because they don't change theta. They don't change X sub D. Essentially, they don't move. And DU equals zero because that's the virtual work done by M and P combined. Then P acts in the plus X direction. So there's P and M acts in the plus theta direction. So that M times del theta plus P times del X sub D has to be equal to zero. But we already know that del X sub D is minus 3L sine theta D theta. And that equals when combined with M del theta to zero. So the del thetas cancel out and we achieve this simple formula that the moment m is 3 times p times l times sine theta. So this moment is also related to the angle. As the scissor moves out to the right, this moment is actually going to decrease because this angle gets smaller as the scissor pulls out. In problem 10.2, we'll find a reaction using the method of virtual work for this linkage. CBA, where point C is on rollers, point A is pinned, and point A is connected to point C with a spring. And the spring expands as P pushes down. And there's a force F in the spring equal to K delta X. And our goal is to obtain a relationship between the force in the spring and the applied force P. The free body diagram is drawn in the lower right, and the origin is at point A. And our job is to solve for YB, which is the vertical displacement of point B, and YC, the vertical displacement of point C, and then take differentials to get del B and del C, which act in the same direction as forces P and F respectively. S is the value of the differential expansion or compression of the spring. We study the geometry and we see that Y sub B is equal to L times sine theta and Y sub C, which is an element in triangle ABC is equal to 2L times sine theta because you take this triangle that I'm showing you here and you divide it into two subtriangles, each of length half YC and, and that's how you find that half YC is equal to L sine theta. So YC is equal to 2L sine theta. And you take the differentials of these two equations and you get del Y sub B is L cosine theta del theta and del Y sub C is 2L cosine theta del theta. The spring force is F equals KS, where S is the elongation of the spring. So that S is equal to Y sub C minus the original length of the spring H. So that's equal to 2L sine theta minus H. And because F equals KS, F equals K times 2L sine theta minus H. Now we apply the principle of virtual work. Points AX, AY, and AC do no virtual work because they don't change Y sub B or Y sub C. Point A is fixed. It's point C is moving. But A is fixed, so AX and AY don't have any virtual displacement to multiply. Force C does not do any work because point C is on rollers and force C is acting perpendicular to Y sub C. That doesn't do any virtual work when your force is perpendicular to the displacement. 
And we take the equation du equals zero, and that's the total virtual work done by forces P and F, which is P times del Y sub B minus F going in the up direction times del Y sub C going down. So that's where the negative sign comes from. You set that equal to zero and you substitute in our three relationships that we found on the prior slides for del Y sub B and F, there's F, and del Y sub C. And now we have an algebraic equation that just has P, K, sine theta, and cosine theta in it. The del theta terms cancel out so that F is equal to KS, which is equal to K times 2L sine theta minus H. We substitute the values for del Y sub B, del Y sub C, and F into our virtual work equation. And then we get a new equation for P. P minus 2K times 2L sine theta minus H is equal to zero. And while the book doesn't go through all this algebra, I actually did it to verify that the algebra is correct, and I won't repeat all the steps on the video, but you can study the slide and see that I got it right. And at the end of the day, we see that sine theta is equal to P plus 2KH over 4KL, and F is equal to KS, which equals K times 2L times sine theta minus H, but we have a solution here for sine theta, which we can then sub into this bottom equation and do yet more algebra that I verified. And we find that F is just equal to one half P. So a lot of algebra leads to a very simple conclusion that the spring force is half the applied force P. Now we'll take a look at the mechanical efficiency of real machines. In the toggle vise of figure 10.7, we assume no friction, and the virtual work was solely due to P and Q, such that the output work, 2QL cosine theta del theta was equal to the input work, PL sine theta del theta. In an ideal machine that's frictionless, and that doesn't really exist in this world, the output work equals the input work. But in a real machine, friction forces do work, and the output work is always less than the input work. And here's some examples of toggle clamps, so you know that they're not just abstract items in a textbook, but they're really used in machine shops. On the left, you have a vertical handle a toggle clamp, and you place your hand on this red angle and apply a force in this direction of the blue arrow and you rotate the arrow, and what you wind up getting is a force P that pushes down on this black grommet and holds whatever workpiece you have to a table. And it's not going anywhere once you bring this clamp all the way over. You also have a device called a horizontal handle toggle clamp. In this case, the clamp starts mostly vertical, and you rotate in the direction of this blue arrow, which is clockwise, and you apply a downward force shown by this red arrow, which then extends downward to the red grommet, which then holds this little blue block to the table. So the purpose of the taco clamps is to position a workpiece on a table so that it doesn't move, so that you can do machining operations on it. I also gave you a video here that you can watch on YouTube, which shows you the actual displacement of the horizontal and vertical handles of these toggle clamps in motion. And back to our discussion of mechanical efficiency of real machines, let's assume that the friction force F develops in figure 10.7a on the lower right between the sliding block B and the horizontal plane. Then the revised free body diagram of figure 10.9 shows a friction force F 
equal to mu sub n. So that summation of the moment around point A is equal to force N times XB minus P times a lever arm of XB over two, which means the normal force N equals P over two. And with mu, the coefficient of friction at block B, F equals mu sub N, which equals to mu P divided by two. The total virtual work of the forces Q, P, and F during the virtual displacement is shown in figure 10.9a, and that's that del U is minus Q times del XB, which we had before, minus P times del Y sub C, but now we have a new force, minus F times del X sub B. And when we go through the virtual work equation, del u equal to zero, and we do our additional algebra, we find that q is equal to p over two sine theta over cosine theta that we had before, but we get this extra term minus mu times p. And that simplifies to q equal p over two times tan theta minus mu. Q equals zero when tan theta equals mu. In other words, when theta is equal to the angle of the friction angle, phi. And Q can be less than zero when theta is less than phi, which means that we can only use the toggle vise for angle theta when theta is greater than the angle of friction phi. The mechanical efficiency zeta is defined as the output work over the input work. In an ideal machine, it's one. In a real machine, it's less than one. If you recall, when we discussed worm gears, it's far less than one. For the toggle vise, then, efficiency is zero, meaning Q is zero, when mu cotangent of theta equals one which is what you get when you solve for Q equals zero. And the efficiency equals zero when tan theta equals mu, or theta equals arctan of mu, and then of course that's equal to phi. So if theta equals the friction angle phi, the efficiency is zero, meaning the output work Q is zero, and you wouldn't make a toggle plant like that. Recall we did sample problem 6.7 to find the forces exerted by the cylinders of a hydraulic lift. That was a very complex set of calculations back in chapter 6. And we had our table consist of a platform and two identical linkages, of which we show one here in the picture, but there's really two of these cylinders. And we used only one linkage and one cylinder in our analysis so that we applied a load of half W to half of this hydraulic lift table. And showing you another review slide from chapter six, we had EDB and CG were each of length 2A. The length of the lift was L, so L over two between E and G horizontally, L over two from G to H. And we had to determine the force F sub DH exerted by each cylinder in raising the crate when theta was 60 degrees, small a was 0.7 meters, L was 3.2 meters, and it took us about 10 slides to do that. We solved a host of trigonometric equations relating B and C when we obtained a relationship between force F DH and angles theta and phi, and we show that FDH is W times cosine theta over sine phi, which means it was independent of D. And then we did a bunch of more trigonometry and we did some algebra and we did some geometry. And eventually we found that force F sub DH was equal to 5.15 kilonewtons. Now we'll show you how to do it with the principles of virtual work. It's going to take me only half the slides and a lot less math. So here's all the same information, but using the principle of a virtual work, we're going to find a relationship between the force applied by the cylinder, which is FDH, and the weight, 
but we're not going to have to use all the reactions. However, we will need a relationship between the virtual displacement and the change in this angle theta, and that will be found from law of cosines applied to the given geometry. So here is our free body diagram, same one that we used in problem 6.7. Before, we had reactions EX and EY and reaction F sub CG and half W here on the top, and we were trying to use those to find force F sub DH. When we apply the principle of virtual work and we have virtual displacements del theta and del S, we quickly see that reactions EX, EY, and F sub G don't do any work because they don't change y, and they don't change this distance x. Therefore, the principle of virtual work simplifies the analysis to involve only the forces f sub dh and w over 2. Using our virtual work equation, minus a half w times del y plus f dh times del s equals 0. Well, y was equal to eb times sine theta. So here's y, and there's, there's eb, and there's theta is this angle. And that was equal to 2a times sine theta. And therefore, del y is equal to 2a cosine theta del theta. Now we used our laws of cosines that we had before, s squared equals a squared plus L squared minus 2AL cosine theta. S squared equals A squared plus L squared minus 2AL cosine theta. And we can differentiate both sides of this equation knowing that A and L are constants and the differential of constants is zero. So that 2S del S is equal to minus 2AL times minus sine theta del theta. And then del S is equal to AL times sine theta over S times del theta. Now we substitute our relations for del Y and del S into our virtual work equation. We do enough trigonometry on this equation and we do simple algebra on this equation to solve for F sub DH. W cosine theta equals L times F DH times sine theta over S. And then F sub DH is equal to W times S, distance S, over L times cotangent theta, which is a lot simpler equation for F sub DH than we had in chapter 6. And note also that F sub DH, the force exerted by the cylinder, is still independent of the distance d. In step five, we substitute in w is equal to 1,000 kilograms, theta is 60 degrees, a is 0.7, and l equals 3.2 meters to find a numerical value for f sub dh. Well, w is equal to mg, which is 1,000 kilos times 9.8 one meters per second squared, so it's 9.81 kilonewtons, as, as in problem 6.7. And our equation for law of cosines was used to find S, because A and L were constants, and we defined the angle theta as 60 degrees, so S was just 2.91 meters. And then we put 2.91 meters here for S, we put 9.81 kilonewtons for W, L was still 3.2 meters, and cotangent of 60 degrees is a well-known number. And we still find that F sub dH equals 5.15 kilonewtons. So half the slides, half the equations, still had to use the law of cosines, but definitely a simpler analysis for a fairly complex machine. And that's the key value of the principle of virtual work is that when you have complex machines but you're only focusing on a couple of forces, you can find the value of those forces a lot faster than when you're using equilibrium equations.